Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'll be building three things. Ooh, three. Hmm, that's right. The final tanks in the Flames of War Comet Armored Squadron box. Those being the Ram Gun Tank, which technically isn't really part of the squadron, but why let that stop us? The Ram Kangaroo, and the Sexton, which is based upon the Ram. All three of the vehicles are built from the same sprue, which is nice and convenient, I guess. Five of these sprues are included in the Comet Armored Squadron box, and the intention is that you build three kangaroos and two sextons. These models are also available in individual boxes if you would prefer to buy them that way. These sprues are about what I would expect from a modern Battlefront sprue, and I've said pretty much the same thing about every sprue that's come in the Comet box so far, and that's because it has consistently been the case. The sprues are very neatly moulded, and while there is going to be a little bit of cleanup required, it won't be too taxing, especially if you clip the parts off the sprues neatly in the first place. The detail is pretty good. Obviously it is a wargaming kit in a small scale, so it's not going to have all the fine details and fiddly bits that say a 35th scale display kit might have, but it is quite a good depiction of these vehicles. You should have no trouble identifying them on the table, which is largely the point of these. On each sprue there's enough parts to build one vehicle, or technically two if you're building the ram and kangaroo, otherwise you have to make a choice between a ram variant or the sexton. There aren't enough parts to have both, unless you want to do a lot of what I would assume to be tedious and annoying magnetization. So you can't really build multiple vehicles per sprue, which would be cool, but there will be enough bits left over that you could probably build some nice wreckages as scenery or something, or just put them in your bits box. The Comet box does also include some figures to put in, I assume both the Ram and Sexton. I'm not going to use them though, so I've not shown them here. There are also unit cards with the various bits of information you might find handy while playing Flames of War. They have only included cards for the Sexton, Kangaroo and Kangaroo Rifle Platoon, and I assume if you buy the separate box that builds the Ram and Sexton, you would get a card for the Ram Gun Tank as well. It is a bit disappointing that it's not included here, but I guess it makes sense. It's not strictly included in the Comet Armored Squadron, so a few cents can be saved by not including the card. There are decals included with this set too, but I've lost the picture of those somewhere, and if you want you can see them in the Comet Box Overview video, which is linked around here somewhere. Unfortunately Battlefront don't include decals in their boxes anymore except for the big sets like this one. Fortunately aftermarket options do exist. Instructions in this particular boxing are in the Getting Started booklet, and I would assume on the backs of the individual boxes. The instructions for both builds are simple and easy to follow diagrams, though it doesn't include the turret for the ram. Though I guess, who would be crazy enough to build the ram gun tank when it's not part of the force? That would be silly. That said, the turret is very simple, so you could probably figure it out yourself anyway. It is however found in the instructions on the Flames of War website, and I've linked those in the description if you would like to check them out. Or you could just watch me build the vehicles. That'd be good too, that is why I made the video. Anyway, I decided to start with the Ram and Kangaroo. There is effectively no difference between the Ram hull and Kangaroo. The first thing to do is glue the upper and lower hull parts together. It's not hard to figure out which way around this should go. With sufficient glue and a bit of pressure, it should stay together nicely. The rear plate, or butt if you're looking for the real technical term, goes on the rear like so. I did have to apply a bit more upward force than I was expecting, but nothing too severe. The transmission casing goes on next, and there are two of these on each sprue. I have no idea if it's even possible to put the wrong one on, but they are visually different, so you shouldn't get them mixed up anyway. The tracks come next, and these are pretty much like every other Flames of War plastic kit in recent memory. The keying will ensure that you've either got them on the correct side of the hull, or you have to put in a bunch of effort to do it wrong. Next, this little machine gun turret goes on. The D-shaped keying makes this easy to place, though it also means that you are limited in the directions you can aim the gun. I don't think that's super important though. Not all kangaroos had this little turret, so if that matters to you, I'm sure you can modify the model accordingly. I think it looks cool though, so I'm installing it. And that's the ram kangaroo completed. Obviously there are no figures in mine, but who's to say they haven't already disembarked and gone off to do infantry things. The way to make it a ram gun tank hull is to add this disc. 
Clearly, you would only glue that into place if you were absolutely certain you were never going to use the kangaroo option. I do want to use the kangaroo option though, and that does make magnetizing the turret for the ram a bit difficult. I didn't think it was that big a deal though, so I just didn't bother with the magnets. You could, if you were so inclined, kajiga some magnets to be a bit more discreet, possibly also including a magnetized infantry figure insert. I didn't feel like doing that, obviously, but it's not a bad idea. Let's move along and build a turret so we can have a ram gun tank. I start by gluing the turret bottom into place. Nothing too tricky here. The stowage bin on the rear of the turret has an open bottom, so I guess it's not the best idea to put anything of value in there. You could fill that with putty if it's too immersion breaking for you. I've just left it the way it is. Then the mantlet goes on the front of the turret, which is not at all unexpected and quite easy to do, unless you try putting it on upside down for some reason. Probably don't do that. It wouldn't be much of a gun tank without a main gun, so that gets installed here. It's easy enough to get into place, though you'll probably have to do a bit of nudging to get it nice and straight. After all, you don't want a misaligned gun now, do you? The commander's hatch, which is the next part, goes on here, and I don't know if these rotated or anything like that, so I did my best to get this on straight and facing the right way, assuming the right way is the one shown in pictures. There is also the option of an open hatch that you could use, but that's not the sort of thing old No Figures Herbert would do. And with that, the turret is completed. To allow it to sit on the kangaroo hole, making it a ram hole, I used the disc. And so we don't lose the disc, I glue it to the bottom of the turret. The disc is keyed so that does mean you won't be able to rotate the turret, but I don't feel like that's super important. Now that we've got both the ram and kangaroo, it's time for the sexton, named after the great Australian Saxton Hale, by somebody who couldn't tell the difference between an A and an E. We start with the same hull bottom, into which this part is glued. The forward bit is the gun mount, and I assume the boxes in the floor are ammo stowage, or maybe just something to elevate the crew's standing position. That assembly is then glued into the upper hull, which again, with glue and pressure, shouldn't be too difficult to get together. I did find I needed a bit more pressure than with the ram hull though. The rear plate goes on next, obviously at the rear, and this is different to the ram one. You can see there's a little fence that goes at the top. This is presumably for keeping pets and small children from walking off the engine deck. And here's the transmission casing. You can see it lacks the ribs that the one on the ram has. I'm sure you'll be very surprised to learn that I don't actually know the development history of this, but I'm assuming this is similar to the later Sherman transmission casing. On the hull rear, we add a couple of jerry cans, named after the famous cartoon cat Jerry from Tom and Jerry. You're just making this up, aren't you? These aren't difficult to get into place, though I found I had to apply a bit more pressure than I was expecting. Not that it made things difficult in any way, it was just a bit unexpected. Onto the engine deck, I add this spool of cable. I assume this is for telephone connection to keep in touch with the boys and coordinate artillery fire. I follow this with the side fences. After all, it doesn't make a lot of sense to have a fence on the rear, but not the sides. These more or less drop right into place, though you may find you need to do a bit of nudging to get them to sit nice and neatly where the fence meets the side of the hull. The tracks go on next, and these are exactly the same as the ram tracks. And I guess this could have been done a bit earlier, but it doesn't really matter when you put them on, as long as you do, in fact, put them on. It is looking rather good, but it does seem to be missing one minor detail. Ah yes, very funny, Herbert. You pretend that you don't know the gun is missing. Ha ha ha! Mm-hmm. The gun is very easy to install. It just drops into the little holder bits for it like so. Choose the elevation you think looks best and the glue should hold it in place, unless you didn't add glue. You should add glue. And now we've got a sexton ready to do sexton things, as well as a ram ready to ram things, and a kangaroo and so on and so forth. And that's all the models in the Flames of War Comet Armored Squadron box completed. You didn't build any of the figures, Herbert! They don't require any building. Anyway, that's all of the armoured vehicles, and as I've been saying the whole time, I'm quite happy with them. I guess I've got a certain expectation for Battlefront's plastic models, and it is kind of high. All of these models have met those expectations. I suppose, to be clear, by high expectations I mean good, neat, quality plastic that's well moulded and goes together with no problems. 
So I think these look really good, and while the ram gun tank isn't really part of the force, I'm still going to paint it up as such. And I don't know if I've mentioned it or not, but I do plan on painting the Comet Armored Squadron, including the infantry figures that would ride in the Kangaroo. It isn't going to be done right away, so don't expect to see that next week, but the process has at least started. I guess I don't really have a lot to say about this particular kit that I haven't already said, and that isn't obvious when you look at the models. So maybe I'm starting to waffle a bit. I guess the conclusion would be that I think the Comet Armored Squadron box was a good purchase. It's good value with a lot of models that I quite enjoyed putting together. There should be links to the box set overview video, and all of the individual build videos in the description if you want to check those out. I haven't really given any thought to how effective this is as a force on the gaming table, but if you want a British army, it seems like a pretty good starting point. You can always add more to it later if you want. There are some other cool things coming from Battlefront soon that I'm pretty excited about, but that's for future Herbert to enjoy, I guess. For once future Herbert gets something nice instead of a problem inherited from past Herbert. It'll be a while before we see any of those, so in the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. If you'd like to watch me build kits like this one live, check out my Twitch channel, which is where I livestream pretty much everything you see on this channel. There's a link in the description. Subscribe and click the bell if you want to see more, and if you want to see my videos a bit early while helping keep the channel going, consider becoming a patron or supporting over on Coffee. You can find links to those and all of my other things like Discord and social media in the description below. Take care of yourselves, happy modelling, and thanks for watching. Farewell.